One. Bobby's tips for artists because he loves you. Hola, you amazing artist. I received a question from a beautiful artist named Liz on the horrors or one of the horrors of being an artist. Horrors, not horror. She says, hope you had a great birthday, Rafi. Thank you, Liz. I have one question for you. How do you stay focused? As an artist, I find my biggest challenge is staying focused and ignoring all the random invites to things or asking me to go hang out here or there. I can't seem to tune it out or balance it. As somebody who does this art stuff for a living, I could understand the tremendous amount of pressure that you get when you have to decide between working in a studio alone or hanging out with your friends having a good time. It's probably why most artists are pathologically antisocial introverts. Like me. And me. Okay, so let's get serious-ish. So my suggestion is that you get rid of all your friends, cut all contact with your family, get rid of all outside stimulation such as Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. They have some nice cave huts in, uh, what country is that? Out in the desert somewhere. You can actually rent them. A cave hut? Yeah. In the desert somewhere. You can't tell me that you haven't thought of it from time to time. You know, just kind of cutting off all contact. You know? Mm-hmm. No? No, me, me neither. Admittedly, cutting contact with everybody and living in a cave hut is probably not the best solution for this particular question. Truthfully, it's not really practical because, you know, your friends might think that you have some mental instability going on and your family will just keep persistently showing up like mold. But if you're anything like me, then you probably enjoy having some friends and, you know, you don't mind a lot of your family. It doesn't mean that you can't evaluate the quality of the friendships or the relationships that you have. Tip number one, evaluate your relationships. Today, more than ever, it seems like we value the quantity of friends that we have versus the quality of friends. It's like we attach our self-value to the number of friends that we have on Facebook or Twitter. Yeah, don't tell me that you've never judged someone based on their friend count or how many likes they got on their post. And what's worse is when you compare yourself to them. Nobody likes me. <laughs> By the way, make sure you like this video so that Sad Rafi doesn't show up. I like your videos, honey. I know. <laughs> what the heck is this video about? Oh yeah, yeah. Pulling out the weeds from your garden of friendship. I believe it's about focus. <laughs> focus. If you have a friend that doesn't understand how important it is for you to create art and how important that life is to you, then I seriously have to question that friendship. Now hold on, Edward Scissorhands. You don't need to trim them out of your life just yet. The problem is that unless you're an artist, you're not going to understand what that feels like to need to go back to your studio and create something, to basically look forward to spending the night by yourself with your thoughts and maybe a piece of canvas in front of you. For somebody that doesn't live in that world, what they see is, you deciding not to go out with your friends and to just go and spend the evening by yourself. This brings up tip number two, have a heart to heart. You're gonna have to bring it up. You're gonna have to be straight with your friends and family. You're gonna have to lay it out for them. This could be really hard for some people, but it's the fact that you weren't honest that got you in the shit storm in the first place. So if I was to have an honest heart to heart with some of my friends, I would say, why don't you understand I'm an artist? Just kidding, don't do that. You don't need to be dramatic. This is an actual conversation that I had with a friend of mine a while back. I want you to know I love you, but I gotta be honest with you. I often feel like you may not understand how important it is for me to have the time to work on my art. <clears throat> Don't get me wrong, I enjoy hanging out with you, but I just want you to be aware that I'm going to have to set some boundaries. So that brings us to tip number three. Set some boundaries. Boundaries. 
See, the thing is that although you're feeling like a victim because you have someone who's constantly pulling you away from being creative, the fact is that you created the dynamic of that relationship because you never set boundaries. Also, chances are you may need to be prepared. If you are setting boundaries with somebody, whether it's friends or family, that you have not established boundaries with before, chances are they're gonna try to push those a little bit to see how far they could get. You know, it's like having a dog. Although friends are not dogs. Let me just make that clear. But dogs can be friends. But dogs are man's best friend. Yeah, good point. So you have this dog and you wanna keep him from going into the kitchen, but you don't ever shoo him out of the kitchen and you don't have a gate up to keep him from going into the kitchen. You find yourself getting all frustrated, keeps going into the kitchen, he should know better. Finally, one day you decide, oh, shoo and you put up your boundary. It's been doing this for a while now. So it's gonna paw at the gate. It's going to like sit there and cry to try and get you to break that boundary down. And if you do, then the dog goes back into the kitchen and all it learns from that situation is that the louder it cries or the more annoying it is, more chances there are that you will take that boundary down. I'm not saying that my friends are dogs. That's not what I'm saying. Just in case my friends are out there and decide to get butt hurt from watching this video. Don't get butt hurt. I'm not saying that you're dogs. I'm saying everybody's a dog. We all get trained by each other and we train each other. This is not <laughs> going where I wanted it. Moving on. Moving on. The whole point of that really bad analogy is to stick to your boundaries. Once you set a boundary, once you have this open dialogue with somebody and tell them, hey, you know, art is really important to me. I'm going to go home every day and I'm going to work on my art. And if you want to hang out, we could hang out this weekend. But whenever I have a few hours to work on my art, that's what I'm going to do. Now, if you don't actually stick to that, then the message that you're giving them is that you're not really that dedicated to it in the first place. Now, maybe you've had this conversation and you've done all these things and there are still some people that are trying to guilt you into doing something that you don't feel like doing, or, you know, they're demanding your attention, almost like a baby bear. <laughs> That's what a baby bear sounds like. What is yeah, they do. And the problem is because these certain friends and some of your family actually feel entitled. Sometimes when you're setting those boundaries, you may have to just, hey, let me tell you something, man. Now, I'm not going to pretend to understand your family or the bad shit crazy dynamic that is your family or even my family. There's no understanding that. You'll have to figure that out on your own. But I do recommend that you think about the boundaries that you're going to set and stick to them. Now, let's say that you've done all this stuff and there's still someone that just does not get it. Distance yourself from negative people. Chances are that you'll have these few dingleberries that are persistently holding on to the way that things were. Maybe they're having a hard time with change. Maybe they don't respect you as an artist. Maybe they don't understand the language that you're speaking. Either way, you're going to have to distance yourself from them because chances are that they're being a negative influence on your life. Most times, people that are like this are a negative influence on your life. If it's not working out for you, you don't have to have a relationship with somebody, even if it's family. Now, once you've made these changes, it's pretty easy. The rest is up to you. You know, I recommend creating an art ritual type thing where maybe you play some music or you make some tea, you do something that puts you in that art mood. And of course, my last tip is to unplug, become unreachable. That means turn off your phone or put it in the next room. I can almost hear you panicking through the camera. It's okay, it's gonna be okay. You're going to survive being unplugged for a little while. You don't want to be interrupted by constant text messages from people trying to get a hold of you or any type of social media notifications that pop up. 
get the phone and put it away from you so that you could focus on being creative. You do want to make sure that you let some people know that you are going MIA, that they're not going to be able to get a hold of you, just so that nobody calls the fire department. They break down your door trying to get to you because nobody could reach you. So let some people know. And there you have it. Those are my seven tips on how to deal with time suckers. <laughs> Thank you, Liz, for the awesome question. If you guys want to check out Liz's art, it's freaking amazing. Check it out. I put the link in the description box below. So if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them as honestly and authentically as possible. You may not agree with what I have to say, but that's the beauty of living in such a diverse world. If you are an artist, make sure that you add a link to a place where I could see your art on the question that you ask. That way I could feature it maybe in a future video, but I'd like to see your art anyway. So there's that. Thank you so much for watching you guys. You guys are totally freaking awesome and I totally adore you. If you like what you see here, you can subscribe by clicking right over here. You see me with an umbrella? Click there. And if you want to watch our last video, you can click right over here. Say goodbye, Clee. Good day. Adios. Awesomeness!